The solo novel is out, adding more insights. Kevin Smith has a crazy theory about Ray's mom. And Christian Harloff is late. Jedi Council is about to begin. <laughs> Jedi Council. I'm Kat Napsack here for another wonderful edition of the show. And yes, as I just said, my team's Christian Harloff is en route. He had some other business. He might be here. He might not. But in his place, one of my best friends in the whole wide galaxy, Mark Yodi Riley. Well, Ken, right back at you. Happy to be Ooh. here. Pinch hitting. I wore my Gremlin shirt just for this. <laughs> Gremlins are canon, by the way, in the Star Wars universe. Makes sense. And you just saw her in the wide shot. But we are very happy to announce the Smith Lord is back, Hi. Tiffany Smith. Hi. It's been a long yeah. time, young yeah, lady. I don't know what this weird wave was, but I, yeah. but I did it. Hi. Yeah. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to be here on the show. It's been a while. You've been so busy. It's been a little crazy. There's yeah. been a lot of running around, a lot of auditions, lots of DC Universe fun times. Yeah. I heard. Yeah. yeah. You're doing some things. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're part of a show. You're doing like a little stage show out I there now, am. too. <laughs> so lately, like, that's why my voice is a little more manly today, because we were rehearsing till like 1030 last night. Oh, yeah. Was, uh, oh, yeah. I'm getting my like Rocky horse. It's sultry. It's, 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 it's not manly. Sultry. It's sultry. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that's so, good stuff. Yeah. So it's been, I feel like lately it's just kind of been trying some new things to challenge myself and oh. going back to the singing. And so, and guys, if you want to come see it, yeah. you guys are going to come, right? Oh, we're going to yeah. come see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to so, be there. So Rocky Horror Ipsa Show, it's the last week of October at yeah. Three Doors. Three Doors. Three, three, three Doors? Three Doors. Three, 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 three of Clubs. Three it's of at clubs. Three of Clubs. Three of Clubs. That's where it is. <laughs> where I used to do stand-up comedy. You're now doing Rocky Horror Picture Show. Rocky Horror Hipster Show. Hipster nice. Show. Nice. Yeah. We do. There's a little like updated jokes and stuff in there. So Upda <laughs> updated jokes. I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. And you got a cool little eight bit Star Wars shirt on. Yes. So you guys all know everybody who follows me on social media. Mm -hmm. You know I love Black Milk, and they just are launching a new Star Wars line. It comes out on the 18th, but I got a couple pieces early. So this is my little nice. eight bit shirt. I've got like a Yoda dress. It's awesome. So go over to their site and check that stuff out. I think yeah. you should get a Yoda, Yoda dress, Yodi. Like, I, I, I want a Yoda dress. It's like Wait, a long there... hipster. It's like a hipster long wear shirt. Like, wear you like could a wear kilt. it. I could. You I could cinch it. it. I could tuck yeah. it in. You could rock that. I could tuck it in. I could. I could just wear it to bed. Yeah, you could. And I and my life would be complete. You could. Absolutely. I like all of this. It's Yoda <laughs> on Dagobah, so it's really cool. Looking. Also, the dress is muddy. <laughs> and, and has a snake in it. So you can sit and, on the couch, eat, spill on yourself, and no one will no, Does it perfect. have a place for a backpack, for a Yoda yeah. backpack? Um, yeah. There's not like a slot in the back for a backpack, but you could wear a backpack over it. That's that. smart. You I know? Like that. That's that. some good you know? stuff there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we are about ready to dive into the show. The show is live, as you guys know. And how do I prove that? Well, I don't know. I can prove it by reading this birthday tweet that I received 19 minutes ago from David Taylor. I am David J. Taylor says, hey, can I get a birthday shout out today, Collider Jedi Council? You guys make Thursdays more enjoyable. And I love being a Patreon supporter of the Schmodown. All that stuff is great. David. Well, happy birthday to you. Anyone else? Happy wanna? birthday happy to birthday. you. Happy birthday. May the force happy birthday. be with you. All right. Sorry, I just was yelling over. I'm I know. Just, I was trying to, you know. I excited to yelling over everyone because I'm back on the show. It's That's really great. I'm, I'm happy to have you here yelling over the rest of us. <laughs> uh, let's dive into, and I'm going to remember this time, Cody, Star Wars movie news. That's right. I'm remembering finally to title this segment correctly. <laughs> I just usually dive in. We got a lot in Star Wars movie news to talk about, though not a lot of news, not a lot of hard facts, Riley. And yep. we're going to start by having a little fun with our friend, Kevin Smith. <laughs> You've worked with Kevin. I've worked with Kevin. Uh, Mark, have you had a chance to work with Kevin yet? Uh, no, but I opened the door for him. He's a sweetheart. <laughs> and that was working for him. That's right. So I worked for him by opening the door and being like, hey, there's Kevin Smith. Yeah. That was he cool. is an absolute sweetheart of a man. Yeah. I will say that he's a big Star Wars fan. But he was speaking on his show, Fat Man on Batman, though he is not, that title doesn't apply to much. It should be like, really. used to be Fat Man yeah. on Batman, or like, Healthy Man on Healthy Batman. Man. I don't know. Healthy Man. Uh, and usually, I know Mark Bernard is usually on the show. I don't know if he's on this particular episode. But this crazy theory popped up, and it's crazy. And we're going to talk about how crazy it is. But <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun to dive on into these theories. And this is what Kevin said 
uh, talking about his producer buddy, Brian Volk Weiss. He said, we were talking about Clone Wars coming back, and he said, Dom, I got a theory that there's, that's the, the way to start introducing Ahsoka slowly into the live-action movies by bringing her back prominently in the cartoon. Because now that they don't have Princess Leia stories to tell, they need another strong female character in the universe. Now, I personally think there's a lot more to do now, thankfully. But he goes on to say, Ahsoka's been there for years, much beloved. Just is it in the movie? So I was like, I think maybe they're doing that so they can slowly bring her into the movies. And then Brian blows my effing mind by going, maybe that's who Carrie Russell's playing. And then I said, that's the man i want to see your version of star wars then i was like no that can't be it i think carrie russell probably plays ray's mom and then he beep, drops the bomb and goes what if it's the same person so mark riley we're gonna start with you this idea that ahsoka tano as played by carrie russell in episode nine is ray's mom what do you think oh my god that's gotta be true <laughs> it's it's absolutely makes perfect sense I mean, I thought for sure Mon Mothma was going to be revealed to be Ray's mom. See, I can do it too. <laughs> Back in Rogue One? Yeah. That's Rogue fine. One. You know what? Yeah, this is the, like, I love that we're still going. Yeah. I love that we're still well, going, and I love Kevin Smith, and I think yeah. that is by far the sweatiest, nerdiest take mm-hmm. I think I've heard, and just shows just his joy of Star Wars because it's like, wait a minute, Carrie Russell is, that, is Ahsoka. That, uh, wait a minute. She's raised mom. Wait a minute. She created the force. Wait a minute. She created the death. Star. Wait a minute. She's, she's a bounty a hunter. Tree. Wait a minute. She's Boba Fett. It's like I. She's it's the look. force tree. It's she's, fine. she's the force tree. All right. So I, I love that there. That you can just have fun, and he can you just can have fun and do the 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 head cannon, the the stunt casting, the right. you know. It all goes down to this guy just loves Star Wars, and I. He does. That's I, I'm sitting at the panel with two good people mm-hmm. talking Star yeah. Wars. So and this is part. This is part of the fun. Back in back in the old days, yeah. 2015, you could have this kind of fun, and I think uh, we talk on Force Center about speculating responsibly. What we mean yes. by that is yes. go crazy, but then don't take those expectations into the movie so tightly that you don't enjoy what's put out in front of you. Uh, doesn't mean you have to enjoy everything that's put out in front of you, but you might lock yourself in a box with your expectations. Yes. However, I enjoy this kind of stuff. I think it's fun, Tiff. So let's, overall, your thoughts on this, and then let's have fun and see, Mark, Tiffany, yep. how we could make this work, <laughs> story-wise. <laughs> let's do, oh my God, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Tiff, where are you at uh, with, so uh, with Kevin? I think it's one of those things where I, I do agree that I think Ahsoka's a character mm-hmm. that inevitably, at some point, fingers crossed, does step into the live action world even more. Mm -hmm. I do think she's a character that is so, so loved and that has built up Mm -hmm. such a following that I would be disappointed if there wasn't a moment that they actually give that to the fans as well. Ah. But I think, I'm not saying that she needs to be, you know, everybody's mom under the sun. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I do think it would be cool if there was some kind of connection because then obviously you bring up the fact that he's like, the um, Ryan was like, her parents were trash. And I'm like, well, what if when he says that, it's that like, well, she wasn't a Jedi. She's just nothing. So like then I start thinking like, maybe it could be Ahsoka. Like there is a chance that there was something that he referenced her that way because he knows some kind of story that's going to go further with this character. Who knows? I just love the fact that it's like we can, like you guys said, speculate, bring up characters that we like and have fun conversations because that's what we get to do in the middle time between all these movies coming out. And then they get to tell us what the truth is. And and, (laughs) well, and then it's also what we did on the playground for me in 1983, because I have gray in my beard. Mark, you you were there, too. But that's I I was the same year. But gray in my beard. People did. People did in 90s and the 90s and 2000s. Mm -hmm. That's part of what being a Star Wars fan is, is going, did you see the thing? What if? What if? And uh, I think that's fun. So the idea of how this could happen. So when they revealed at the end of Star Wars Rebels that Ahsoka was, you know, back in the Gandalf uh, robe and so uh, her and Sabine were going off. We assume we, we get the idea looking for Ezra, not necessarily looking for Thrawn, but we know the, the whales, the space whales, the Purgles took them to Purgle Town way out somewhere. We don't know where. One of the things, Riley, that came out of that was like, look, I love that because I love the character of Ahsoka. Yeah. Uh, it grew from... I was annoyed at snips. Yes. <laughs> and then <laughs> we grew, all were. It grew in the, you have to allow characters to grow, and they, that one grew yep. so well. It's one of my favorite Star Wars characters. It's a, it's a lot of people's favorite Star Wars, mm-hmm. character, Star Wars character. Um, but with Ahsoka being alive post Return of the Jedi meant, in a way, we can't have her run into Luke. We can't have her during the original trilogy run into Luke. It could mess some of the space kind time continuum up, Marty. So, <laughs> but let's have fun with it, Post Return of the Jedi. How could this happen? Could she have 
during Luke's adventures because he goes on the Legends of Luke Skywalker grand tour yeah. around the galaxy studying the history of the Force, the mist, the, the tide, all these other Force-like things or names for the Force in other cultures mm -hmm. and planets. Yeah. Uh, could they run into each other? Yeah. Where? Why not? Where? Where? Unknown regions? Unknown Let's put regions. this theory together. Batu? I mean, I don't think she's still going around as her either name that we know her as okay. now. Yeah. I think she would probably be going by something else. So it's like he could have met what, this Annie, person. Annie Tolliver? What, 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 she just made up some <laughs> stage name? Are you Ahsoka Tano? Annie Smith. <laughs> My name is Tiffany Annie Smith. Tiffany Smith. Yeah, yeah. That's As her name. Ahsoka Tano. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> a long, long, time. long time. I don't know how you make this work. Wait, okay. So, 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 so who are we, who are we claiming so as her dad? Luke. Luke? Okay. Okay. Let's well, say pause, Luke. Pause I'm pause saying though. Luke. Yeah. Are we just first trying to make it that Ahsoka is Ray's mom and then the Carrie yeah. Russell of it all? Yeah, yeah. We're, okay. we're just having fun with it. I, yeah, I'm going to assume Luke's the father. Let's say Luke's the father. Okay, so uh, Luke and Ahsoka. It doesn't have to be. The I guess it could be Thrawn. Okay, so Luke goes Ezra. on. Yeah, yeah. Luke but goes. But if, if Ahsoka and Thrawn were the parents of Rey, yeah. do you think she? You know, strange things have happened in the galaxy. <laughs> this, I feel like she would be some kind of ethnically ambiguous baby. True. I feel like Luke. Okay, Luke gets some force. Okay. Something right. He feels mm -hmm. some 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 tremors in the force. Right. He goes. He goes to. Oh, I thought you were talking sexy times. Well, I might be going there. Right. It sounds like I might be setting up a Star Wars porn. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He goes to the unknown regions because he's he's, he's searching. It. He's been searching. He's searching, and then it's like he runs into Ahsoka, and then you know they start talking <laughs> over coffee, blue milk. Sure. Sorry. Sure. Coffee, blue milk. Yeah, and uh, you know, one thing leads to another, right? And it's there's just like tremors and there's exploring tremors of in the unknown forest. regions. There's tremors yeah. in my unknown region, yeah. and roar um, the porg. Yeah, the porgs okay. are there. The porgs right. are there. Right. Uh, Ahsoka, he 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 so, he, uh, he he goes. That's a nice lightsaber you got there. Two of them. Right. And and she's like, "Can I see yours?" Right. So that that <laughs> brown chicka brown. So, and then brown chicka brown cow. So it, it's the tale of the porgs and the bees. We know what happens there. Uh, and this is maybe twenty years prior. Do you think then this leads to some kind of problem with Luke Skywalker, where he's like, "Ooh, Jedi aren't supposed to do this," but you know what? I feel like maybe it's a time for a new Jedi. Yeah. Uh, that attachment is not forbid, and uh, uh, this kind of messes with Luke a little bit. Do you think that's what the case is, and that's why? The she, Ahsoka runs away. Should Tiffany, does she run away? We, you know, yeah. This is it just the more we talk about it, the more I'm like, it's impossible. This it's is impossible. Impossible. <laughs> By the Which way, hey, chat. May be part of the point. <laughs> chat room. Come on, stop being so grumpy. It's fun. This is fun. All right? Have fun. Let go of your conscious self and have fun and stop yep. yelling at everybody going, this is a dumbass sequence. Just have also, fun. Also, can we talk have about fun. the fact, though, that it's like, it's fun for us to talk about all this stuff and we yeah, get but to chat might. about it, but it's like, Kevin Smith put in, the, right. I think, the quote in there was like, and then I went to J.J. Abrams and told him my idea. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, who yeah, doesn't do true. that? Like, the level of fandom from us to Kevin is just like, oh, cool, I'm just going to talk to J.J. and be like, hey, so I was on this podcast and we came up with this idea. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> J.J. Abrams yeah. is like, Ignore. Ignore. Anyways, so here we go, guys. Yeah. Let's set up for the next shot. Yeah, you're right. Or yeah. it just makes me think of the two of them sitting there and being like, dude, what about this? Dude, what about this? And he's like, they have a conversation for two hours, and JJ's like, the ideas are already done, but thanks, right. Kevin. Yeah. But this was fun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and truth, it, it just doesn't work on a lot of levels. Uh, it's fun, and maybe maybe that's part of the point, Mark. Maybe yeah. that's part of the point yeah. is uh, sometimes I look. At the end of the day, I still hope she doesn't really have... Any parents that we know of. <sighs> yeah. That's where I still land. I, I still I, that's, think that's the best answer. I still land. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. let's, let's get serious for a second. Uh -huh. uh, I'm starting to think that uh, we might get some kind of reveal. I think JJ yeah. might go there. It's, it, call it a gut feeling. Just mm -hmm. a, a gut feeling that we could see some kind of connection. Sure. Uh, I was saying this off air, actually. I would love it. Love it for it to be a mirror of Anakin. And that there is a reveal that maybe the parents that Kylo Ren is talking about 
are the adoptive parents, and that it's and the that she was the force. Yeah, the, I, I think that would be very interesting. There actually. was an idea early on. A, a, a friend of mine named uh, Kevin uh, used to always uh, tweet me this theory that uh, uh, the force needed to create Ray out of kind of a mea culpa for creating Anakin. <laughs> right. <laughs> like uh, I was thinking about it. Uh, I created that guy who went and killed a lot of people. Ah, <laughs> I'm the force. I can do better. And then maybe Ray came out of that. Do you like this idea, Tiff, of Ray being born of the mist, of the uh, tide? I think that when I really think about the force and when, when people talk about it, it's not good. It's not bad. It's not. It doesn't have a That's light and dark Absolutely, it's one a of the mixture lessons. of all of it. So I'm it's like, one of the I lessons don't Luke think learned. that you would do something where it's like, oh, well, we created one that was a bad one. Right. Now we need to correct that and make a good one. I don't think that that's how it. In my mind, that's not how the force works. Yeah. Um, but I do think there is something to be said where it's like maybe every so often the force just manifests as mm. a child, and it's like they every. <laughs> I don't know, every couple of years, centuries, a new one comes and it's just like, there is no, there is no, this is the good one and this is the bad one. It's just like, here is a force child, go. Mm. What does that become in this world? And I That's think it's cool. more of a, it could possibly be more of a response of what the galaxy is at that moment, that the galaxy created Darth right. Vader. Is the galaxy gonna create something different with Rey? Possibly. Yeah. So I think at, I just kind of made that up as we were talking. No, but that but, could but be really cool. I actually like that more than uh, Kylo was trying to mislead you. Even though, again, Ray's the one that says it. Kylo's kind of like, "Oh, I know. Tell me what you it know. is. Don't you? Don't yeah. you?" And she's yeah. like, "Yeah, they're they're nobody. I, I know that. I've always known that kind of situation." Yeah. Uh, um, but again, she, he could be playing with her emotions in her brain. Mm -hmm. I, I can understand that. But I I like strangely enough, I like this idea more than it's. You know, Luke, Luke, or Obi Wan Kenobi. He was your grandfather, Han Solo, some way. Yeah, yes, yeah, Han Solo. Uh, I, I, I makes more sense in Star Wars because George likes those kind of things, and mm -hmm. look at the Mortis arc and everything. He likes getting deep into the cosmic mm -hmm. force, so it can make makes some sense. And explaining the force more. I feel yeah. like no matter what, there is so much spirituality that's in this movie, and there mm -hmm. is so much of a commentary on society and the world. And I think that. Ray being a kid that's like, she is the force, what does she become in the world where it is right now? Mm -hmm. Could be something really interesting. I do think it's, you start talking about who's her parent. Oh my God, it could be this person. And then it just feels like soap opera-y. And I know that there's soap opera aspects to Star Wars yeah, for yeah. sure, but it just feels like it's pushing too hard that direction for me. Yeah. But they, I'm sure they could do it in a way that I'd be like, oh my God, mind blown, I love it. Yeah, as long as it's a good story beat and yeah. fun, but you know, it, it's hard to argue. It's hard to look at the Last Jedi and have the, it look. I know it landed for a lot of different fans out there that they were really hoping for some kind of familial uh, connection. Right. Um, but it was such a powerful moment for me, like mm -hmm. when she goes, "They're nobody," and that like that was the point. And then the end epilogue of like you know, Broom Boy. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. the point that you're special. You can be special. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to be tied to. The Luke Skywalkers, right, the right. legends out there, you, uh, uh, filth, the, the, the daughter of filthy junk traders, could mm -hmm. be special, could become something right. more. And I love that. That's powerful to me. But if they make it work organically, yeah. story wise, you know. Yeah, you kind of have shock to. Shock me. Thrill me. Yeah, again, release yourself of your own personal expectations, mm -hmm. you know, and try to enjoy what comes out in front of you or, or, or not. Yeah. Um, all right, so I think we solved it. Uh, next time you see Kevin, just let him know, JJ, uh, <laughs> we've updated the theory. And that it's going to be okay. All right, next story here. Uh, the solo uh, Star Wars story novelization is out. Mara Lafferty wrote this book. She is the first woman to write one of the novelizations of a Star Wars movie. A uh, historic in its own right. And it is, uh, I think I'm the only one uh, who's had a chance to read it, correct? Yeah, I've got yeah. it downloaded, but I haven't read it Download, yet. Download, you got to listen to it while you're singing songs. Yep, Mark. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't read it. So, uh, unfortunately. as with uh, like Last Jedi and Rogue One, it goes a long way to add things to the story, uh, give you a little more insight as a book can do. The Force Awakens uh, novel, written by the great Alan Dean Foster, who of course wrote the uh, New Hope novelization and uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Uh, the Force Awakens one was was probably uh, just a little cut and dry and just an adaptation of the movie. A couple extra scenes, nothing too much. Uh, it, it's enjoyable, but the Rogue One 
novelization is really good. Brings some great insight. Mm -hmm. One of the most important little aspects of Cassian Andor is revealed in there that he was a separatist. He was from a separatist family. The mm -hmm. relationship between Sin, uh, Sin, Jin, and the partisans is explained even more. The great scene where she's walking in, asking where people are, and they're like, well, they died. They died. They died. And all her people that she worked with, which ties back to Rebel Rising, another great mm -hmm. book. Last Jedi brings the prologue that we all loved about the Force calling out Luke. Yes. And saying, here's the life you could have had if you ran away like you are now. This is why you need to get involved, that kind of stuff. Great mm -hmm. stuff. This one comes comes between like Last Jedi, Rogue One for me in, in terms of, uh, it doesn't add great insight, but it does bring a lot to Kira. Mm. Uh, Kira increasingly to me is becoming one of the more interesting characters in Star Wars. Uh, based if you start going beyond the movie, and I think uh, the movie had a lot of good stuff if you if you wanted to take the time to look for it. But Ray Carson and Mer Lafferty, two women writers in the, with Kira in their in their hands, have brought a lot of depth to this character, and that's the biggest takeaway from this book with me. Also, some great moments with Chewbacca, the L three stuff. So, um, I, I, you guys haven't read it yet, but but I can see yeah. some of this this article on uh, IO nine that mm -hmm. kind of like puts it all together makes me a lot more interested. I like the fact that there's a lot more of his uh, academy days uh, in the Imperial Navy, mm -hmm. you know, and what mm -hmm. happened there. And um, that, that to me is interesting. Uh, I like the idea of going deeper into Kira as well, yeah. um, because I know I'm looking here, it says uh, life in Crimson Dawn, which is, yeah. was fascinating me, wanted mm -hmm. more because of especially the end, what happened, what we saw there. Yeah. So, yeah. I also always think it's interesting because Obviously, when they did the novelization of The Force Awakens, it's like, we're just getting into this world. I think even though Lucas and Disney had their hands in everything, it's like everyone was very tentative. Mm -hmm. Everyone was kind of, okay, we'll add in a little bit, but not too much. Right. And as it's gone further, it's like, okay, well, we know the things we can't change, the things we can't touch, but here's a character, Kira, that we mm -hmm. can really delve into. We can really explore this character more. And even make it where there's things that have happened in the past that this character impacts on the future. I think that's one of those things where even reading comic books or novels, whatever, it makes me think of Court of Owls in mm. the DC universe where it's like, you can do something where the writers are so good that they can look back through everything and say, here are these moments where I can make it be this character that no yeah. one even knew existed, yeah. but I know I want their story to be woven through everything. So yeah. I think with a character like Kira who is really strong and intriguing. I mean, I think a lot of people walked out of that movie and were like, I want to know more about her. Yeah. I want to know more about her backstory um, that I think writers will see that and say, okay, cool, let's play. There's been two, I mean, again, Most Wanted by Ray Carson, uh, technically, you know, you, you get to that young adult label and so that might mean some people don't take the time to read it. It's it's really good. Rebel Rising, uh, Leia, Princess of Alderaan, Lost Stars are some of the greatest, mm -hmm. you know, great Star Wars young adult novels now, but um, Most Wanted by Ray Carson's there too. For what it brings to Kira, uh, for what it sets up to this this thing, because she is a complicated character in the sense that mm -hmm. she feels as though she has to survive, yep. but she can't win. She's not here to win. She she tells Han, it's Just not about winning, to get by. staying here, staying alive. Um, so she feels she has to serve somebody, but she loves power and most wanted. She is right away like, oh, I kind of like. I'm great with planning. Like she wants to rise up with Lady mm -hmm. Proxima at some point. So it all comes together, and one of the big things. You know, movies, movies, you're moving fast. We know the story of this movie with different directors and rewrites and all this kind of stuff. You hear all that stuff. Some of the stuff, it, Carrie, you have to slow down and stop and look at it. And there's moments where it's confusing. There, without a doubt, there's a moment in the movie where she kind of tells Han, you wouldn't like me if you knew what I had to do. And I mm -hmm. think, unfortunately, just the way we've just been programmed in society, we take it in a, quite frankly, a sexual direction. Yeah. And that you know, is, is unfortunate. And then this this book really delves into that. It had nothing to do with that. Yeah, Everything to do with murder, death, and what she had to do to try to first stay alive and escape Dryden Voss. And then when he offers her, kind of like, oh, I like, I like you. Mm -hmm. You you killed the guard I put in front of you. He makes her kill people in front of him. And it, and it, and it starts warping with her brain a little bit. And that's why she doesn't, <laughs> with Han, she's kind of like, you don't know who I am. By the way, you're a good guy. You yeah. think you're bad. 
I'm probably more bad than you. It, 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 it's, it was, it's really an interesting read, that particular stuff. I mean, I think that's the stuff where it's, you get to get all the different levels of a character. I, I didn't actually think, I didn't go sexual with the character when well, but, that but, line but, was said. I definitely went in the like murdery, she's killed people. Correct. And because of the fact that we know what Dryden Voss is like and that yeah. he is that person. So to me, I'm not like, he doesn't, he could have anybody he yeah. wants in that way. It's like, he wants somebody who challenges him in a different way, who yeah. he's intrigued by and interested by. And to me, that was having a different look on the value of life yeah, yeah. and killing people in that way. But I think that it's something where it's a character you get to have different levels. <clears throat> and we were talking about this right before the mm. show is that that was some of the stuff that I felt like was a bit missing in Solo for me is that I'm like, even the interactions between her and Han, it was like, I wanted... I wanted to see more there. I wanted to see the depth of their relationship where it's like, he's been trying to get back to this woman for his entire life. That's all he's been trying to do. And so his focus has been solely that. Her focus has been solely, I need to survive and mm -hmm. do whatever I need to do to make that happen. And so when they are reunited, it just felt like I wanted more. And so I'm excited to check out some more of the books. No, I, I, look, I, I, get some more of that. I come down on the side of loving Solo, but it's... If, if I'm ranking, and I hate ranking these movies, it's probably my least favorite of the new films because it did feel a lot on the surface. And I, and I think you're very right in, that, in saying that. And, and I, I, as a Star Wars fan, love to look at all of this now. All mm -hmm. of this, this rolls out in front of you and you have these pieces put into this, this soup now called the Solo Soup. We have the Rogue One Soup. We have this soup. And, and it's starting to unfold. The stuff with Chewbacca gets pretty deep. This, this movie's a love story about Han and Chewy, and Chewy, mm -hmm. yeah, and it comes to play more here too, where Kira's very much like, "I'm changed, you're changed too," and and Han play. There, there's a moment where they meet where it's it literally says Han will regret the moment he met Kira for the rest of his that he re met Kira for the rest mm -hmm. of his life because of a stupid joke he made, and so that gives the the author has a chance to maybe look at that and go, ah. Yeah. And I know these are written before the final movies come out, all yeah. kind of stuff. But so it's interesting there too. Well, and it's also just immediately as we're talking about this, made me think of Lost Stars, where you've got these two characters who grew up together, and they diverge and go on two totally different mm -hmm. paths. And that's kind of the same thing we get here. And yeah. even when we were talking about the possibility of it being Anakin and Ray, that it's like here are two people that mm -hmm. were on a similar path, and one chooses this way, and one chooses this way. One's not right or wrong, good or bad. It's just different. Yeah. 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 There's more stuff in the novel, including the, well, darker end for L337. Uh, this this, this uh, was a sticking point for a lot of people in the movie of a droid that, that wanted freedom and whose whole thing was, no, I am, I am a sentient being, not a programmed droid, ends up trapped in the Falcon. And I had a interpretation of it. Now, that wasn't L3. That was a part of L3. It just so it's not like she, she died, but now her navigation system goes on. And then the novel comes out and kind of even doubles down on the idea that the Falcon, against L3's consent, trapped her and took her in. And it gets a little sticky. And I, it, I, I, I would love to... <laughs> Love that. I wish I wasn't the only one that read it and that I could discuss it without spoiling. I know, right? <laughs> there is a final conversation between Lando and L3 there as is. L3 is, is dying Aww. and becoming part of the Falcon. Oh, I like, thought she's you meant, like, dying out of the Falcon. She, no, no, she's dead. She's part of the Falcon and her and Lando have a final conversation as she's kind of like, you know, I becoming one. But, and like stuff's coming on the screen and she's starting to become more of a, you know, zero, 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 one, 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 one droid yeah. and won't be able to communicate as L3. It's her last communication as L3 kind of. And it's, 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 it's tough. It's yeah. a tough read and it doesn't tough, necessarily. Like it's solve. awkward or tough? Like tough it's hurt your heart. It, it hurts. It hurts as a fan because, you know, you're like, oh, poor L. Because Lando is affected by this death. He goes on much like he, a little morsel so from the legends. In canon, Lando goes on to now manufacture droids. It's yeah. it's something that affects him, and yeah. and even in last shot, there's one final thing that you know L three does. So he Lando's affected by it. So the death has merit to me, but the idea of this this female droid. It's basically her. It's basically her. her. Yes, kind of. <laughs> It's it's Love a little that. bit of an uncomfortable notion too. It doesn't necessarily shed more light. It actually makes you think. Oh. L3 didn't want to be part of the Falcon, but the Falcon keeps telling her, uh, yes, you yeah, you did. You just, you just, you don't know it yet. And it's, 
It's it's a e. oh okay yeah I, I want to skip ahead and well, read this. I will part. say though I feel like if if that is true, it would make more sense as to why everyone and I mean the Falcon is the Falcon, but it's yeah. like if that is true and everyone knows the story that's connected to the Falcon, that it's like it makes more sense why it's so important to everybody, why it's so important to Lando yeah. to get his hands on again, why it's so important that they feel like it's not just a ship, it's well, yeah, it's a like, being. Like Han kind Solo, of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. so Han Solo in New Hope says it's the ship, you know, she's the ship that made the capsule run. Yeah. So there's probably some un, uh, some deserved un, uh, uncredited credit to L3 for piloting through the Maelstrom and through the Maw. Um, that, that's, it, it, and, and I think Merle Lafferty's trying to deal with that in a way. And, mm-hmm. and it yeah. does end with L3 is not alive. Mm-hmm. She's a new thing, the Falcon with two other droid brains. So it's not like an empire. It's just L3 sitting there going, 3PO, you're an idiot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's part of the programming. So it all ties up, but it's, it's, a, little, it's a little different. Yeah. A little different. Um, the solo digital release is coming out uh, soon. We got the uh, the, the old uh, hard copy uh, media coming out what twenty fifth. But this weekend we have uh, the solo uh, digital release, and it's got some deleted scenes. Uh, Riley, you had a chance to watch them, these deleted scenes. Yeah. I did not. Uh, we got to see Han flying the what is it, the Thai brute? Yeah. Um, which the novel goes on to explain that he doesn't like it because there's a droid brain in there trying to tell him what to do. Right. Um, and uh, you like. I like this scene. I like this scene a lot, and I love the fact that... that what? You liked this. I liked it. <laughs> Don't tell me my business, boy. You liked it. Uh, yes, Ken I liked it very much. in your brain telling yeah. you. I liked that the fact that he is, like, arguing with the droid. I think it's a nice setup for later. I think right. it could have been a great, like, little foreshadowing moment. Um, I like that he is doing heroics. He crash lands, and then he's in front of a tribunal, and I, I love the, the idea of him... I, I liked seeing more of his Imperial Navy stuff. Mm, mm-hmm. And that's what I, I mean, this is one of those scenes, you know how you watch deleted scenes sometimes and you go, ooh, yeah. Yeah, most, I, most of the time, I most don't time, think they belong. It's unnecessary, yeah. didn't this, need to be there. Right. This one in particular, I'm like, put that in there. Yeah. I really, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, uh, but that's, that's just, I think, one of the ones I've seen. I need yeah. to check out some more. I wonder too, though, if it's because of the fact that they did have so much going on with this movie, if it's like, it came to the point where they're like, we've got to explain some of this other stuff, so this scene has to go in there, and so that's why the cuts were harder, that the deleted yeah. scenes do seem much more like they should have, could have, and might have needed to be there somehow. Mm. Um, but it's just like they had to really make the hard cuts. I think you know, we, pacing is always the issue. The pacing is always the issue with all these things. The, the, the scene of, uh, and, and it's in the novel in full detail as well, of, of Kira just telling Han, hey, we got to jump into this vat of eels because mm. it's going to hold uh, the scent of us is going to be you know, thrown off for the uh, Carillion Hounds. It's, I actually think it's a great scene on camera. Like there, There's some real chemistry between Amelia Clark and Ellen Ehrreich. It's a great little moment. It just extends that chase thing scene way too long. Yeah. Uh, this one, I mean, we don't get Tag and Bink in the movie, which a lot of people are looking forward to, Mark. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they actually showed it. I haven't watched this clip yet. Do you see them in this particular clip? Uh, yeah, I believe that's them. I got I to gotta watch it again and, and, mm-hmm. and really get into it. I think it is them because okay. um, then they say on the, some of the content grabbing all this mm-hmm. stuff, then they're like, unfortunately, then they're shipped off to, uh, Mim- what is it again? Mim- Mimban. Mimba. Right. Mimban. Mimban. Right. Yeah. Um, and so we're, because they're, Tag and Bink were the stormtroopers standing above Chewie's uh, thing, right? Yeah, they, they, yeah, Kevin Rubio's characters, uh, so three comics at least, where they go through all the adventures of Star Wars and they're kind of behind the scenes. They're the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. They're Rosencrantz and Guildenstern yeah. of, of Star Wars, yes. I love that. Yes, they, yeah. they are in the, the scene talking, almost running the tribunal. Uh, I believe that's them. So, um, you know, internet, tell me if I'm wrong or not. Yeah, I know you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you haven't had a chance to see these yet, either, Tiff. I haven't I have seen either. this last one. I, I saw another clip that we're going to talk about. Yeah, uh, which which clip is that? This one with the the old the mall guy. Mm, the you old like, uh, the hey, mall guy. Hey, the old did you like that one? I'm going to point at you now. I did like that. <laughs> yeah, one. then tell us about <laughs> mall. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like. I mean, I think it's again we're talking about Kira, and you're getting to see more from her, and you're getting to see more of an interaction with this character that. I when I first saw the movie, I remember walking out and being like, "Did everyone see what that was like? What?" Yep. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So having more interaction between the two of them, and this scene just makes you believe that 
we are going to get more between these two characters. And there is potential for there being a really interesting partnership between the two of them. Yeah. And I think that for a lot of people, it's like, you. Just, I, I always want more of Darth Maul. And watching mm-hmm. Rebels and seeing his interactions with Ezra, I'm like, yeah. what if we get, like, it? I mean, it's not going to be the same as that, but, like, seeing those interactions and how he's trying to mold him and mm-hmm. work his brain that I'm like, having his hands on Kira in that way. Yeah. Holy moly. I'm well, so on board for something Yeah, like no, that. And I, I, look, uh, Maul is a character that went from a, a blunt object, a blunt weapon. Yep. A murder, a murder, mm-hmm. a trained a murderous yeah. soul. Po- point him into the direction That's of the all Jedi. He was. Yeah. He, he's one dimensional in that regard. Yeah. And, and then Filoni and team, I, I, and, and George for bringing him back mm-hmm. in Clone Wars, have slowly started to really layer this character. So that by the time Rebels comes along, you know, does he have real affection for Ezra? Those What's are some of on? my favorite scenes in Rebels. Like yeah. he when hates, he's coming out of the shadows and talking yeah. to Ezra. It's and, great oh, stuff. God, he so hates good. Palpatine. He's been abandoned by Palpatine. He's, he's not a blunt object just a blunt object. And mm-hmm. in fact, he's maybe past his prime as a, as a fighter, so he can't just be a blunt object. So yes, he, he has Kira in his midst, but what I like the twist is, is Kira is afraid of him. She's been afraid of him. Um, but now this is, uh, we learn only the second time she's dealt with him. Um, there's already this twist in her brain of she was able to use Dryden Voss mm-hmm. and go up there. I still think there's this giant, I don't think we'll get it on the big screen, yeah. but there's that giant gap now in the story of Maul had a Crimson Dawn, trapped on Malachor mm-hmm. in Rebels. How does that happen? And does Kira have anything to do with it? Because I think she could defeat I, yeah. him in her own way. Yeah. Yeah. So that might yep. m- that would make you happy. Yes, that would make me so happy because I, I just feel like it's like you're going to build this character. And we've ha- I mean, we had it happen mm-hmm. with Maul. We've had it happen with Boba Fett where it's just like you get these characters that people are like, ah, oh, more of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And thinking that we could potentially get this story or even Captain Phasma, I'm like, oh God, like build it out more. And Kira, uh, something going on between the two of them and how she becomes even strong enough to outwit Darth Maul and trap him somewhere, like that could be really interesting. And I just, I think Amelia Clark is such a great actress that it would be really fun to see her dive into that even more as well. Could be good, could be something we're still gonna get we have a lot of Star Wars stories to tell in a lot of different forms. Final story here. Uh, we, I know we got some stuff. We got the pictures. Uh, they put out those pictures of Darth Maul. I guess we can play that. You got those, Cody? Cody Hall, everybody. Cody Hall survived a trip to Sizzler with me. There it is. He's doing all right. Uh, these are the promotional photos for Maul Ray Park in character. Mm, um, so cool. I love that there was this... Very, very stupid thing of, uh, uh, Ray Parks uh, put on some weight. What are you talking about? Jeez. The guy's 42 now. He was 22 when he was small. Guess yeah. what? You're all going to get there. Yeah. And, and he's also in like so much of a cape. In- He's Cloak. also an amazing Belt. shape. Yeah. yeah. Um, How can I don't even know? I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. All you uh, yeah. people fat Good shaming luck. Darth Maul. Good luck. Yeah. Do it to his Good face. Luck. All right. <laughs> but, but, do I mean, it to his face. My my uh, my, <laughs> my buddy Frankie Kazarian, a big, big pro wrestler, he told a story uh, uh, off air. So I won't say it much too much on air. That he and, and Chris Daniels, his tag team partner and best friend, were at a convention. And Ray Park was there, and they were sharing some beers, talking to Darth Maul. Uh, you know, like, oh, how cool is that? Because mm-hmm. Frankie's a huge Star Wars fan, and. Uh, some fans started to challenge him. Much like pro wrestlers get challenged at a bar. Like, ah, you think you're tough, you think you're tough, and then stuff happens. People were challenging Maul, like, and Frankie and Chris Daniels had to, like, get involved and pull Darth Maul off of fans. Like, <laughs> but, like, legitimately yeah, wanted like, to fight him? Or, like, yes, hey, like, no, if I was in a world like, with oh, Darth Maul, like, I'd do 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 and I'd take you, my you, lightsaber out. You think out you're tough and... with the flippity flips and all the flippity doos, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yeah, let's see you use the force on this. <laughs> right, Park. <laughs> Ray Park's legit. Like he was yeah. the stunt, one of the stunt coordinators, yes. uh, you know, I fight coordinators. I so. just want him to say to someone, "Oh, you think you're so tough with all the flippity flips and the <laughs> flop flip flops?" I'm a, I'm a 1930s newsie challenging someone <laughs> yeah. to a fight. Put up yep. your dukes, Maul. Hey, uh, let's uh, go here. Anyways, <laughs> that wasn't really a story. I just wanted. I knew we had the pictures, and I do love the pictures there. They're great. Uh, final story. Uh, Chris White, who's one of the writers of Rogue One, finally uh, addressed what had happened to him when he back in the day. Oh, you know. Back in December 2016, I <laughs> uh, put out a, a tweet that uh, well, it, it made Star Wars political, Mark, as if uh, George, as if George Lucas was an apolitical person when oh, he created God. his story of the post-Nixon America yeah. um, <laughs> and set it in space. Um, 
Yeah. But he addressed it, and he did kind of say, I, I, learned, I learned a great lesson not to try to be funny on Twitter unless you know that the joke is a total hit. I think that was meant to be a throwaway fun comment, but got pretty ugly pretty fast. Rogue One came out of time post the November election here in 2016, and, and a lot of people did to tie uh, the resistance, the hope, the rebels, all that kind of stuff to what was going on. So it, 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 it probably helped light up Star Wars a little bit more than Force Awakens did in that sense. Times have changed. But we do, though, have a, a clip of Chris White's on Collider Live. He stopped by and actually spoke about this, right? Cody, roll that clip. I'm going to ask, and if you can't answer this, that's fine, but I want to ask a question about Rogue One because mm -hmm. I, heard, I heard a thing that in the original um, film or script or whatever that mm -hmm. Vader wipes everybody out like he kills uh felicity jones he takes out uh takes them all out and because disney saw saw that and said no nah, we, we can't do that we got to do the the deep impact version instead mm -hmm. where everybody kind of goes out heroically is that mm -hmm. can you confirm or deny that i deny it you deny it i deny it absolutely okay, all right uh i can't speak to like what what happened after i was uh, i finished my my duties because yeah. once your security clearance is is over it's over it's out <laughs> yeah <laughs> your email is shut You're down out. on yeah. everything but n at no, I certainly wasn't uh, like in the original uh, script that I uh, came onto. Um, I was never aware of that in in the process. Okay. Um, as you probably know, the, the the Vader being badass at the end was an idea from the editor, which is fantastic. Actually, yeah. I thought it was great. Um, what uh, what I came to at the beginning had had um, the two of them surviving had. had uh, Diego oh, and Felicity's uh, characters surviving. Because was there a possibility to try to do like a rogue, not rogue two, but you know, an, another story with all these characters? Well, I, I suppose there was that possibility. Um, there was also a sense that it was a little too harsh to, to kill them off. Yeah. But I put put a stop to that. Yeah. All right. And, kill them, kill and them all. Would you, <laughs> <laughs> would you want to do another one or would you, you want to kind of move on? Yeah. I mean, I, I sort of feel that I've already done the one that I wanted to do. Yeah. I was so lucky to, to – because when you get called in on, on these meetings, you, they don't tell you which – which bit of the franchise is going to be for? And I was like, I was praying, like, please not Boba Fett, please not Boba Fett. <laughs> you didn't want to do that. Would face me with a huge paradox, which is that I think Boba Fett sucks, um, <laughs> but but I wanted to work on Star Wars. Right. Thank you. Uh, right. So, Thank you. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, he dies by accident. That's yeah. very silly. Well, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a, there was always the kind of discussion of maybe if he was like kind of like Dread Pirate Roberts and it was the mantle mm -hmm. was passed on, or like the uh, underworld, okay. or the underworld itself was kind of cool. But like you're yeah. right, like the, the the one that we were given, who gives a shit? Right. Yeah, but but sorry. So you're you're saying no, this so way. so when I got into the room and they said oh, we're we're, we're going to do something based on the the opening crawl, I was so in. Yeah. Hey, uh, Cody. That didn't uh, that didn't seem to address the tweets. It just seemed to be about the end of Rogue One. <laughs> I mean, I guess it does say that in my notes. I just thought since we were talking about the tweet story that that was the clip we had. <laughs> That's oh, well. his answer to the tweet thing. That's his Don't answer. Don't tweet. Talk about something different. Talk about Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, but Darth Vader, now, he came in at the end, right? And he <laughs> killed everybody using the Force and just his mind, right? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. I love that ending, though. I do think, though, it's just yeah? something where... With that whole story where it's something, you know, social media is a wonderful thing in so many ways. Yes. Yeah. And it's also the worst it thing. It can also be really <laughs> difficult to navigate. And it's something it's where it's like you make a joke and you put something out there and people don't necessarily know the tone that you're putting it out as. And right. it's hard for people to respond in one way or they say something and you take it the wrong way when they're replying to you. And it just snowballs into this big, huge thing. And it's so interesting because it's like... If George Lucas were tweeting when the first Star Wars movies came out, like who knows what he would have said or who knows how much it would have impacted people's views of those of the movies that now yeah. we all love so much because there was so much more of a blank slate that you can put your own ideas and your own feelings onto a film. But it's like you look at any kind of epic art piece, mm -hmm. movie, novel, and there's so many different ways you can interpret it. Like I, Lord of the Rings or you know, Chronicles of mm. Narnia, they wrote those as stories about faith, but it's also just like good and evil and all yeah. of these things involved. And depending on what was going on at the time, I'm sure someone could have tweeted something that would make a couple people upset. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, it, it, people, again, we, the, the George Lucas saying in that James Cameron interview straight out, the Battle of Endor is Vietnam. That's my yes. take on Vietnam. And I, the I, Empire wasn't... Mm -hmm. The, the Viet Cong. <laughs> no, you the know? Empire was us. <laughs> was us. The Ewoks um, 
the yeah. Viet Cong, yeah, like hiding in the trees, able to use the landscape, yeah. to turn the tide on a powerful army. Yeah. So there's George saying that, but it just means because there wasn't Twitter, we didn't yeah. hear that. Yeah. So we grew up going, it's the story of fuzzy little yeah. murder bears. Like, yes. Um, <laughs> so I feel, yeah, with Chris White, you know. But again, I think Rogue One came out at a interesting yeah. time yeah. Uh, and and a lot of people attach a lot of things and that's part of what art is too you put it out there and people can attach yeah. what they want to it good or bad yes. alright that's the end of movie news we're going to quickly stop into what's the deal with canon you know what is the deal with canon Mark Riley uh, well canon <laughs> is uh, canon, it's, a, it's a thing canon is the collection of it's facts a, that you believe are real and matter yes <laughs> I have my own canon in my head yeah uh, I can make anything work head canon yeah. head canon I like canon. Uh -huh. Head canon is a lot of fun. In your head canon, Ahsoka is everyone's mother. Yes. In my head canon, Ahsoka is the mother, uh, is my mother. I yeah. mean, that's just. She is the mother I of dragons. Am the, <laughs> I am. Mark, what is, what is the force? <laughs> um, the force? Yeah. Couple new comics out this week Darth Vader 21 and The Last Jedi number six. The adaptation of Last Jedi has been going great in the comic form. A lot of great little added details and scenes. The Vader comic is considered by many to be the best book right now in the Marvel Star Wars line. Tiffany, you like comics. Remember when we Dude. did the show Stacked and you re talked about comics oh and, I, and I filmed stacked. it and edited yeah. Stacked? Yeah. We yeah. did do Stacked. Yeah. The, the, if you guys are not reading Darth Vader, it's great. Freaking get in on it because it is so good. And this issue in particular, yeah. there's stuff where you're like, oh, I wonder how did Darth Vader get his fortress? How was it created? Sure. And the way I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but the way that they describe it, the way that they do it in this comic is cooler than anything I could have imagined. Yeah. <laughs> Does Vader use the force to build it himself? Just, I just read it. Just read just it. Read just it. read it. Just I'm going to pick it. it up today. I'm always a little bit behind. I got head over to Earth, Earth 2 in Northridge, but I'm leaving town today. I think on the way out, I'm yeah. swinging by. Yeah. I'm nice. picking up those comics. Uh, and and the, um, the Last Jedi Star Wars issue, that one's fun too. I think it's, it's one of those things where, for me, it's kind of, it's not nostalgic because it wasn't so long ago that the movie came out, but right. where it's just getting little reminders of moments that were in there and, and that they choose to like kind of tweak and change tiny things where it's like yeah. the, and this is totally like the romantic person in me that I'm like, the relationship of the like smooch at the end and the war the and the, the, <laughs> the smooch, <laughs> the smooches. The, I was going into your what is it your 1920s radio guy? Well, like? actually, you know, it's Irving Kirshner who talks about the late Irving Kirshner who talks about Empire Strikes Back. He's like, I didn't have a big battle; I had smooching. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. that's what it works. That's what that's what that's um, what it is. Well, it just seems like the Finn kiss is yeah. a little bit more like maybe he's not so not into her. Right. Oh, okay. Like that. And it's I a like small that. thing, but it's it's fun. And I think that there's just little things you can pick up in um, the last Jedi comic that there's been a you lot. Forgot or just want little reminders of little cool little moments. So that's yeah. out there too. So that that'll wrap up what's the deal with canon because with the other stuff is the solo novelization. We already kind of went into that mm. as well. So I want to leave time for Twitter and Facebook questions. Yeah. We're live broadcasting live from beautiful Burbank, California, and also we got some pre-selected questions. Our producer John Roca put out here for us. Um, if you want a, a Twitter question to us, all you have to do is use the hashtag <laughs> Collider Jedi Council. If you want to. Twitter question if you want to, to us. Twitter, if, if you want to tweet, tweet. Get out of here, <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> early. It's early. And I'm not done with this coffee. And it's getaway day for me. Uh, Mark, you got some tw uh, Twitter up, right? You got the Twitter machine going. Oh. Uh, we'll look at some of that. But let me go with some of the questions yeah. we, um, we, we, we got going here right now. So Tobias Anderson asks... Tobias Anderson asks, uh, do you guys think we'll, we'll ever get an animated show or movie set in the original trilogy, trilogy era featuring some of the major characters? There's a lot mm -hmm. of potential storylines it could cover, especially between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Interesting question. I actually haven't thought about this much, Mark Riley. Mm. Uh, the Marvel comic series, which I believe is up to issue 53, is yeah. between New Hope and Empire, and it's fast approaching Empire. And you have to wonder if they're going to go past and tell some of that story. So there is some stuff there. What do you think about this? I, I love that idea. I, it doesn't seem like we'll ever, well, I don't know. Yeah, never say never, right? But it seems like we're focusing on, we're getting the resistance. So we're getting right. that, that time period between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens, or at least mm -hmm. closer to Force Awakens. 
Again, I think you could go even closer to Return of the Jedi, and mm-hmm. that that I know that's not answering the question. That's putting it after the original trilogy. Sure. But I always go. To, it's one of my favorite non-canon things. Sure. Legends. Yeah. Is Shadows of the Empire. You love that. Yeah. I love that story. Prince Zizor. Prince Zizor. Yeah. Uh, trying to figure out how to get Han. How to right. you know how Leia gets her uh, bounty hunter disguise. How Luke. Yeah finishes his training i think that, that there's some really great intrigue there right. you know to sustain four or five seasons that might be tough right. uh definitely a mini series could work i guess but um i like that idea i think but you, to your point ken they are covering those events in between new hope and empire yeah which i think when you have that it's it's i don't know if we'll yeah. ever get a show that's, a that's show I guess, or an the, the long-winded uh, answer. Movie or set. And with the Disney streaming service, what do you think there, Tiffany's tweets? I mean, I think it's something that, obviously, I'm sure they're having conversations about. I think what I find to be so interesting with the animated stuff is that they know that if they pick certain time periods, it has to be a limited series. It can't yeah. go on for an extended period of time. And I wonder if at some point they're going to be like, man, we just, want, we just want to do one where we can keep it going, where we can keep creating story, creating characters, building, and it doesn't have to fit in between here and here and at the same time not change any of this other stuff um so that's that's the thing to me obviously i think there's conversations about it there's going to be more limited series that come out because all of us including myself will watch every single bit of it right (laughs) Um, so i'm sure that they will happen yeah yeah i like the you know i'm fascinated a little bit with the you know the construction of the second death star and stuff like that and and Palpatine's. I think James Lucino, the the great author um, who wrote Darth Plagueis, which is no longer canon, but um, you know, it's so good. I just think he just slapped that canon label on it. But I don't he said he really don't. wants yeah. to write a Palpatine story set between Empire and Return of the Jedi, just getting into Palpatine's mind at that time. There's a lot of things like that I'm I fascinated. Love that. Some of the best stuff for me, even like the Vader comic and the Vader Annual, the, the Vader Annual number two written by Chuck Wendig, has some of my favorite Star Wars moments in it. It has Vader returning to to the Petronaki Arena on Geonosis and Vader's true stance Mm -hmm. on the Death Star, the technological terror you've constructed. I love that kind of stuff. The politics of the Empire actually is really interesting to me. Uh, So that could uh, happen. Maybe we'll see, Tobias. Good question there. Raiden Scarnato. That sounds like a bounty hunter in Tales of uh, Jabba's Palace. Mm -hmm. Uh, he says, uh, who should direct the first film in the Benioff and Weiss series? My pick would be Alfonso Cuarón. Uh, I, uh, I have an uh, interesting thought on the two, but w- w- you, you know directors a little bit more than I do, Mark Riley. Uh, Alfonso Cuarón is a great suggestion. Mm-hmm. I love that. Gravity, uh, right. Prisoner of Azkaban. That's what I was like. I was like, which Harry Potter? So you could, do, you could look at those as two templates, you know, uh, right. fantasy and mythology and then space, but more real space but yeah that's yeah. a great that it that's out actually if you think of prisoner of azkaban i think mm. and and those sensibilities benioff and weiss i think that would be a fantastic choice you know uh and and always mm. always 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 when you're discussing i remember force awakens we all did the the fantasy draft and in 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 my oh, yeah. rented home that day when we were doing the the casting the we day. talked about we talked about who we want to direct i mean yeah. matthew vaughn came up John right. Favreau came up. Uh, everybody, Chris Nolan. Yeah. I would love a Chris Nolan oh, Star man, Wars movie. Yeah. I would love a Matthew Vaughn. I would love, after Fallout, Macquarie is a fantastic director who I just think would be really fun. But if you're, if you're putting your head around um, mm-hmm. Benioff and Weiss and the rumors of an old republic, mm-hmm. Peter Jackson... I don't know. Peter oh, Jackson with some Lord of the Rings flavor there. It could be interesting. Less Hobbit flavor, more Lord of the Rings flavor. Yeah. Some choices from you, Tiff? Um, I always like when Neil Blomkamp does stuff. Mm. I think he would be an He's interesting great. choice. Um, yeah, a Benioff and Weiss written, created, Blomkamp written and directed. You'd get the politics there. Old but, Republic, uh, Star Wars. That'd be interesting. Yeah. I mean, okay. I just think visually there's stuff. And then I... Arrival was one of my favorite films, and mm. I just think the visuals Ooh. in that. Denis. Yeah. yeah. Um, Denis I was like, Villeneuve. Dem- Denis Villeneuve. 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 Yeah. Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. Je parle un peu de français. Je parle de chocolat croissant, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> um, <laughs> des mères, bien. That I think he would be someone really interesting, just because of the fact that you watch something like Arrival and it's like there's so much weird, interesting stuff that was going on in there and having him come on board to direct it and manage all of that it, in the Star Wars world. 
Right. I want to see Arrival again. I do too. You just did it. Okay. Yeah, I there want to see go. that again. That was good. Um, I, for me, if, if Benioff and Weiss, and I, I don't think they should direct. I think they're, they're pretty good directors in some of the Game of Thrones stuff they've, mm-hmm. they've done, but I think they would probably even say there's better directors in their Rolodex from Game of Thrones. I look at you know Michelle McLaren, uh, who almost was the Wonder Woman director, and we, yeah, I mean, yeah. was technically great. at one point. Uh, Miguel Sapochnik Sub- is uh, someone who's handled a lot of the big battles in Game of Thrones. Um, uh, you Not that they have to only pull from Game of Thrones. Though I do hope Rahman Jawadi, having I just saw the Game of Thrones live concert oh, at the Forum this weekend, I really hope Rahman Jawadi, who is a rock star, gets to do some Star Wars music for Dude, them. His, he scored Iron Man. He scored and Iron it's Man. The be- it's it's one of the Thrones. best scores I mean, in, in Marvel. At, at one point during the concert, he himself was out there with an electric guitar playing Game of Thrones, and I'm like... <laughs> this, this is, is why the guy. you're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, be good. Uh, and then she had uh, had a meeting. Remember, something came up with her and maybe Lucasfilm, but Reed Morena, uh, who is a cinematographer but also director, uh, getting a name like that into. Yeah. And I remember she was up there meeting with Lucasfilm, and one of those things you don't know. You know, we don't know what it could be. Well, a- a- Ava Duvernay was was rumored to have met. Uh, with, yeah. with uh, Lucasfilm. I mean, you, you go she there. Just, I just, I get a sense that. She just might not want to be in that. I, yeah, that's franchise, what I get. You know what I mean? And she she's doing. She, wants, new gods. she has her own stories stories to tell. Well, she and she's developing new gods over at DC. Mm-hmm. So there, mm-hmm. there's that. I mean, I, I think there's so many wonderful directors out there you can pick from. Yeah, uh, that have the sensibilities down pat. Right. Neil Marshall. Yeah. Uh, yep. Talk about Game of Thrones. I mean, he's doing the Hellboy reboot. Yep. Reboot. I would love to see some darkness and some, um, you know, some political intrigue, some Game of Thrones right. kind of level stuff in Star Wars. Yeah. That's our do- but you know again space wizards that it's for kids right I mean but yeah. we are getting into a, an era where you can play around in genre yeah. and and kind of look into some of those things I well. also would love and I have no idea how to pronounce this director's name but the episode of Westworld Mm. That was the story of the like um, the Ghost Nation guy. That's like the love story, and you get mm. his back. Did you guys see that one? I didn't watch Westworld. I, I don't fell asleep yeah, during the pilot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Westworld. So, I watched okay. two episodes, and I went, "This isn't Game of this, Thrones." And this <laughs> episode, like, go and just watch this one episode. I, we actually want to catch up. We, yeah. So good. Um, What's the, the director's d- name? Is Uta Brieswitz? Sure, Uta Brieswitz. Okay. Yeah, um, but it's just. It's one of my favorite episodes of television okay. I've ever seen, mm. um, and I think that would be somebody really interesting to tap into. There you into go. They have a chance to bring in some new, new names there. So a couple more questions here as we round down here on the show. This one is from uh, Greek God Papadon on Twitter. That is my buddy Papadon, one of the best heels in professional wrestling. And on September 23rd, he's coming out here to L.A., some uh, barroom wrestling. I'm going to be watching it with John Roca, and he asks, it's all, if it's all about balance, light and dark, Ray, Kylo, Snoke dies, Luke dies, who is there to balance the Knights of Ren? Who are the Dark Side users? A new Order of Jedi in Episode Nine. So let's talk about the Knights of Ren, Mark oh. Riley and Tiffany. I like this idea. Snoke himself says it. Dark Side, Light Side. Luke Skywalker assumed I was wrong. It's you, Ray. All those kind of great cosmic and living force conversations mm-hmm. there. Uh, if the Knights of Ren are there, and I, I could see that happening now more than ever. Yeah. Do we want? Ray to have a Jedi order already up and running? No. This is when Ahsoka Boom. comes in and she's like, I'm no Jedi and there's a team of no Jedis and then that's what happens. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. The gray Jedi, right? Yeah. Is that what the thing oh, is? Oh, the gray. Is that what that, the kids yeah. are saying on there on term. the interwebs? Yeah, I hate that term. Uh, yeah, so a lot of people yeah. hate that term. The bannerless men slash the Jedi-less. Yeah, the Jedi. Non- yeah. I don't know. The brothers uh, without banners <laughs> from Game of Thrones. Yeah. We, want, we want Thor or Samir to come on in. Yeah. Paul uh, K would be a good Jedi. Okay, anyway, sec- <laughs> second conversation. Yeah. I, I, I love the idea of Ray. St- I don't know where I want it. Uh, I, where I want it. Yes, you need to cater to my wants in the Star Wars universe, Disney. Yes. I, I don't know where we're going to pick up. That's what I love about this particular episode is that we kind of knew exactly what we were getting with Episode Eight. We we're going to go right into it because we knew what happened mm-hmm. in Force Awakens. Now it's like there's got to be some time, right? There's got maybe ten years. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And does she have a little, little bunch of uh, Jedi? Uh, yeah, you know, it depends that she on can, the time passing, and we know it can't be. You know, it's going to be maybe a couple years, but it's got to be a couple years. You know? I, I mean, I I would love to see a couple Jedi with her. And to take on the Knights of Ren, but I think it, she's got the books. She's got yeah. the books. She's got the she's got the will. Yeah. 
Uh, but you also can't hard, do a movie called The Last Jedi and then come back in the next one and be like, hold no, on, five. we're going to make more, there's more Jedis, more Jedi are coming. Right. No, you, like, you, I just feel like it's not, no matter what she does, yeah. I don't think they're going to be called Jedi anymore. I think it's going to really? be something Really? Wait else. a minute. That's cool. I like that idea. Now, we've talked about a new breed of Jedi, uh, ones that can date, but yes. Um, <laughs> but what do you think? I, I want to hear mean, more of your theory. But, uh, like, jokes aside, I'm like, that's where I think a character like Ahsoka could really come in because she... Uh, what has been the driving force behind everybody stepping out or doing something weird that messes up to the messes up the galaxy is that mm -hmm. they don't agree with something that they are forced to do mm -hmm. within the confines of light and dark. Yeah. And so if Ray is this person who has seen it and she talked with Luke about what had happened with Kylo and she's seen that experience happen, that I just don't think it's someone that would come out and say, well, I'm going to pick this side. It's like, no, I see that there is a middle ground and... Mm -hmm it just starts making me think about political stuff where it's like the way the world is, it swings one direction, then it swings over here. And it's like the perfect place is that like happy medium in the middle. Like, where do you find that? How do you find that? And right. that's what I would want to see her create. Mm. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Tiffany's tweets, Tiffany Smith, the Smith order returning with some deep stuff there. Final question. Final question. This is from a live question using the hashtag Collider Jedi Council. Mm. George underscore Starman. You ever see Starman? movie in the 80s yeah oh my god yeah. jeff bridges jeff bridges karen allen yeah directed by john carpenter oh there oh, you I've go i've seen it <laughs> and seen star man. guess who was nominated for an oscar in that one uh jeff bridges Woo! Mm -hmm. uh george Pretty underscore amazing. Starman, not related to the movie that changed mark riley's life asks yeah. this this question that i think is kind of fun let's say kylo ren he goes out he checks out ticket punch in episode nine yeah the assumption and i think it's the correct assumption the one i would want would be ray right ray but what about this george asks uh, what do you think uh, about Chewbacca kills Kylo or Lando kills Kylo? Who gets the revenge on Han Solo? Mark Riley. Chewbacca. Chewie. It's got to be Good Chewie. Old Uncle Chewie, as Uncle I'm sure Chewie. Ben called him at some point. I'm going to pay back that life debt by taking out yeah. the man that I killed mean, you. Chewie in Force Awakens certainly tries. But a bowcaster bolt to the hip. Yeah, it, but there's a... Have you seen those... Uh, there, it's, it's like those comics. Uh, it's like... it's, it's I've read art. comics. It's, yeah, I've what read comics. That is those, by far the dumbest comics? thing I think I've said. Have you seen those comics? Those kids? I've read them. Yeah. They're comics over there. The picture book the, yeah. things. Well, there's a there's a like an online comic strip, yeah. fan-made, of like Chewy lifting little little yeah, Ben I've Solo, seen, yeah, 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 yeah. and then he's on his yeah. shoulders, and then he sees him kill Han, and then he yep. just at the last moment pulls the bow bowcaster because it it hits him in this. So it's it's an interesting it's an interesting deep character stuff when yep. you think Chewy taking out Kylo, and 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 where is Kylo going to be? Is he going to be re the big question? Is he going to be is redeemed gonna be or not? Yeah, yeah. And all, all that yeah. stuff. But I love. I love the character stuff in Chewie being the one to do it. I like it. It's very interesting. But I don't think Chewie would do it cold-blooded. No. You know, we're not going to get, you know, a Garrett, you know, Billy the Kid turning yeah. the back thing. Yeah. You know, Young Guns 2. Oh, the greatest movie yeah, the of, greatest all movie all time. of all time. Yeah, the greatest movie of all time. Where it's like, Kylo turns, you won't do it, Chewie. Yeah. And, he, and there's yeah. Chewie. I think it, it would have to, like, Chewie has to, like, save yeah. he, somebody and, you know, kills yeah. Kylo. I like I this. All right. Tiffany Smith. I just, I think it's going to cut, like, if Kylo goes out, I think it's going to be in a moment of him sacrificing himself for something bigger. Mm -hmm. I uh, love that idea. Like, I think it could be something where it's like, maybe Chewie was about to shoot him or do something, mm -hmm. and Kylo steps in the way of something, and then he dies, and it's like, mm -hmm. it, there was still something in him. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we get that moment from him, even though it might have been misguided, Um in the film with him and him and Ray fighting where it's yeah. like he looks at her and you're yeah. like, yes, they're yeah. in it together. And so I think that would be a really interesting way to do it because I don't know if he can be redeemed in any other way other yep. than that. I, yeah, I think death has to be involved. Sacrifice is a good idea. Maybe if he tears that fly tie that tie silencer and he flies it up into like the new first order thing and he's like, hello boys, I'm back oh, and he does that. Uh, yeah. But the question, Tiffany, Chewbacca or Lando, which one would you want to kill Kylo <sighs> Ren? Lando. There you go. That was oh, good. Lando. I love that the, the Chewy ones is deep and realistic. That's what but that's why I don't think it could be Chewy. Like Lando, yeah. I think I don't think it would. Lando could just be like 
uh, yeah. there's a fight that happens, something goes down, I, and he's look, like, oh, you killed him? Uh, I, 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 but we've seen those Instagram videos of, of Billy D. Williams getting some fight training in. Yeah. Stupid theory. Uh, Lando kills Kylo. No, I don't. I think Kylo goes by self sacrifice yeah. or at Ray's hands. But George asked a fun question to close the show. Chewbacca or Lando, what do you guys think? Let us know. You can ask us a question all during the week so John Roca can pre select them or live during the show using the hashtag Collider Jedi Council. Uh, thank you. Today, Mark Riley for mm. stepping in last minute. Yeah. Mr. Harloff couldn't get here. Uh, we, right. we miss him. Uh, he'll be back soon. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, appreciate you stepping in. Well, thank you. It was a very, uh, anytime, Ken and Tiffany, I mean, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm in. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, oh, and George just tweeted live. Thanks for answering the question. And my username is actually because of the movie and not the David Bowie song. Nice. So both, you can't go wrong with either choice. There it is. There you go, George. Like you it. and Mark Riley love Starman. Yeah. Tiffany Smith. Yes. Tiffany Smith. That is my name. So glad to have the Smith Lord back. <laughs> we know it's going to be, uh, we, your schedule is, is hectic. So uh, we hope it's sooner than later, but it's good to have you back now. I'm so happy to be back. And you guys, everybody's been so sweet from the Jedi Council world on mm -hmm. social media. You guys always still tweet with me, which I love so much. So please keep that going. Um, and I will be back anytime I possibly can. I know we get to talk about Star Wars offline a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> via text, via phone. Um, but like I said, again, tweet me. Follow me on social media at Tiffany's Tweets. And then good stuff coming up. Check out DC Universe. It launches on the 15th of September, but everybody who's been watching DC All Access, there's going to be some stuff on YouTube still that we'll be doing, and mm -hmm. then some stuff on DC Universe. So make sure that you subscribe early because there's going to be some epic stuff on there. Uh, it's great. You always do some great work. Uh, and I just, you know, it's cool knowing you. I walked, <laughs> you know, I walked into my comic shop one day about a year ago, and someone goes, I saw you on Tiffany Smith's Instagram. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm not cool. <laughs> I am not cool. Yes, you are. Um, guys, happy, uh, happy, uh, happy, happy Thursday. This is Thursday, right? Thanks for it's joining Collider Jedi happy Council. Thursday. Thanks to Cody and Adam in the booth who always make us look good, sound good, and are much more talented than I am. And also, if you love Cody Hall and you love Cobster and you love the Wangers, check out the Knapsack Files podcast this past week. I released Hot Sizzler Nights. Cody Hall almost died during the recording of that podcast. Check it out. We'll Sizzler. see you. May the force be with you always. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.